Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so if uh, you can remember, right, in the last uh, class, right, we have uh, completed uh, uh, growth stages and then we move to, uh, you know, the uh, to the outline of the management of rice production, right? Uh, yeah, we said that we will start with land preparation, right? Under that, we'll have wetland uh, preparation method and dry land preparation method, right? And then uh, the seed treatment, right? that's the planting material. And then we'll establish the crop. Uh, there are two different methods. Uh, it can be direct seeded or transplanting, right? Uh, again, the direct seeding can be broadcasting or raw seeding. Uh, uh, transplanting also, uh, you can plant in the row, right? Uh, and then um, once crop is established, right, uh, the usual economic practices you have to do, um, starting from uh, water management. Uh, again, there are two systems you can cultivate as a rain fed crop or maybe irrigated crop, right? And then nutrient management, right? Uh, we will look uh, and then crop protection. And then finally, harvesting and storage and some sort of uh, processing, right? Uh, before you. Uh, consume it, right, or to send it to the market, right? So those are the, uh, you know, outline of uh, the management of rice production, right? Today we are going to get into details, right, uh, these uh, practices, right? Uh, so before we go there, right, are there any questions from the previous uh, classes? Anything you want to ask? No questions? All right. So, since you don't have any questions, we will get started, get started right? Um, so, the first one is the land preparation, right? Uh, land preparation. After you select the site, right, uh, that's your, you know, normally we cultivate rice in the lowlands, right? Where the elevation is low, right? Uh, because, um, you know, the major requirement is that you have to have standing water. Uh, to grow this crop, right? Um, so the land preparation common method is uh, wetland preparation, right? Yeah, we said that there are two methods, uh, wetland preparation and dry land preparation, right? Um, so wetland preparation, basically what it means is that you prepare the land with high moisture content, right? Uh, when the, uh, you know, the, when the water, water uh, the soil is in such right conditions, right? Uh, you do the preparation, right? So that's wetland preparation. It is a particular wetland preparation, right? It requires uh, water, right, in the field, right, in the in your paddy fields, right? However, right, um, it can begin with the onset of rains, right? You know that we have, uh, if you go to the typical uh, dry zone, right, that the, the typical dry zone is somewhere uh, in the north central province, around like uh, that. Uh, you know the Andhrapur area, because um, if um, if you come to the dry zone in uh, you know where our university is located, right? That's kind of an extreme dry zone, right? Uh, where you can cultivate uh, rice um, in the yellow season if the irrigation water available only, right? Uh, but uh, you know this uh, north central province, uh, you know it it can receive right um, substantial amount of right. Uh, yellow season rain and mass season rain and also in yellow season there are a lot of irrigation uh, facilities available to supplement the irrigation, right? So usually it, um, this land preparation, um, since it requires water, right, uh, it's better we can start with the onset of rains, right, uh, usually monsoon, right, um, southwest monsoon, that's, that gives uh, you the yellow season. Um, the north uh, northeast monsoon that is uh, responsible for for the um, uh, mahasis, right? So you can start uh, with onset of rains, um, then you can save the water, right? 
So if you look the objective so land preparation uh, respective to right, uh, respective to rice, right, specific to rice, right? We do land preparation for all other crops as well, right? Uh, but there are some special objectives uh, they are uh, for the land preparation, especially for rice, right? Uh, some of them are applicable to other crops as well, but uh, some are specific to rice, right? So the one of the objective is that uh, make fine tilt, right? Um, and good seed bed, right? Um, if you are establishing using seeds, right? Or maybe uh, the good bed for the uh, transplanted seed things, right? So, and then you have to obviously make um, the soil uh, into fine particles, right? Fine particles. And then create better isosphere, right? Um, the isosphere means the root environment, right? Root environment, right? Uh, so you have to uh, make a good conditions for the roots to grow, right? For the rice uh, to establish, food, right? And then reduce the weed pressure, right? Uh, this is one of the primary objective, especially regarding the rice production, rice cultivation. You know, land preparation is very crucial. Uh, you know. Um, the rice is cultivated under flood condition again and again. We tell right um, because of that, uh, weed is the um, very huge uh, problem uh, in rice cultivation, right? Because of the water, uh, it always uh, maintain that moisture content, right? So um, one of the primary objective of land preparation is to control weeds, right? Um, so you can control weeds. How you can control? I will explain, right? So you can uh, reduce the weed pressure, right? And then you can incorporate soil organic matter, you know, uh, when you mix this, um, you know, decomposing uh, plant and animal parts uh, with the soil, right, it will incorporate soil organic matter, right, um, and to that uh, depth of the root zone, right, uh, of uh, rice is cultivated, right, and then it will increase the water and nutrient use efficiency, right, um, so I will again explain then how it increases the water and uh, nutrient use efficiency, right? Uh, when we uh, go for plowing, right? Plowing and puddling, uh, I will explain how it uh, increases the water and nutrient use efficiency. But you should know, right? One of the another important objectives is that, you know, uh, of land preparation is that it increases uh, the water and nutrient use efficiency in rice products, right? Uh, so those are the objectives we have, right? With the land preparation, right? And then uh, if you look uh, the land preparation, right, um, there are operations involved, right? When we commonly say road this year, land preparation, there are four, uh, you know, four uh, sort kind of, you know, uh, operations involved, starting from plowing, right? Um, and then we we'll have the condition the puddling, right? And then um, third is bun clearing, right? And then uh, fourth is the level, right? Level. Right, so let's look uh, what are the uh, operations involved and why we do uh, those uh, operations under the land preparation, right? First is plowing, right? Uh, plowing, right? Um, so if you are, right, if you are continuously cultivating a land, right, a land um, uh, for rice, right, then you can, um, at the uh, beginning of the season, right, uh, you have to, you can use the mould board plow, right? Uh, I, I hope you may know, right, uh, different plows, right, you may have studied in agriculture engineering courses, right, uh, introductory courses, right, different types of plows are there, right. So this one of the uh, plowing equipment, right, we call as small boat plow, right. So it, it, it will turn the bottom soil up, right, uh, when, you, when you plow using this particular uh, type of plow, right? It will turn the bottom soil up. But if you are establishing, right, if you are going to start um, rice production in a low land for the first time, right? First time, if it is very, if the soil is very hard, then you have to use the disc plow first, right? Um, before the mold board, you have to use the uh, disc one, right? Because um, to cut and, uh, you know, uh, turn it uh, into soil clumps, right? Um, if it is, if the soil is very compact, then uh, if you are doing for the first time, then uh, you have to do, or you have to go for this plow, right? Because that's very strong one than this small boat plow, right? Uh, that will, and then uh, then after that, after the after you you know put the disc, then you can apply the mold board, right? 
but if you you know every season if you are doing um, the cultivation in a particular land then this particular mold board plow is enough right the objective is you have to turn the bottom soil up right the reason is you know uh, we said that right we have to have clay particles right clay particles those are very fine particles right um those are needed to store water right store water because uh, we have to reduce the percolation percolation losses uh, from the field right so we have to bring uh, the clay particles because usually they they since they are fine particles you know and they will be in the um, um in somewhat deep right uh, deep so so you have to you have to use this particular mold wood plow right and when you plow it right uh, it will bring the clay particles and organic matter to the top right organic matter also may be buried uh, you know uh, some depths right so you have to bring them up right um, uh, to the soil layer you know that that is where this uh, rice crop uh, is grown right uh, at least maybe uh, 15 to 20 cm depth right Now that's the usually root zone depth of rice right around 15 to 20 cm right um so more effective root zone is there maybe it can go up to 30 cm right uh, but uh, the effective root zone is in that 15 to 20 cm right and then uh, another objective of drinking this clay particles that right i said that it, um, when we have clay particles um, these clay particles are negatively charged right so they will uh, you know attract uh, this cation nutrients right so because of that the cation exchange capacity of the soil uh, you know uh, will increase uh, so that will help you to increase the nutrient use efficiency right um, they will not allow the uh, major cations to leach right because uh, they will uh, you know kind of uh, attract uh, those cation nutrients right um and then um, these cation nutrients will not uh, be leached right uh, that will make uh, them available uh, for the crops uh, in the root zone right in the root zone so that will uh, obviously increase the uh, nutrient use efficiency right i said here right you know um, the objective of land preparation is uh, one of the objective is that you can look the last bullet point increasing the water and nutrient use efficiency right that's how they do it right right uh, when you bring the clay particles right uh, obviously in the soil the cation exchange capacity is increases because of that um, the nutrient use efficiency is high right and also since you bring the clay particles right uh, the percolation losses of water right um, is reduced right so you have to store water right you should not avoid uh, you should avoid right the percolation loss so then uh, the water use efficiency also high right in case and then you know when you use uh, this small boat plow right you know, i said that it can you know it can just uh, when you can imagine some of you you may have seen that uh, how that small boat plow uh, looks like right so um, you know when uh, you plow right it will turn right it will uh, you know bring the uh, soil from up uh, uh, lower layers to the you know top layers then it will turn right and when it turns you know the weeds uh, weeds and they are apart uh, weed seeds are buried right uh, they are buried and then they will uh, you know because of the water right uh, you will have you will do this plowing when the water is there right so right so they will um, decompose right um, the decompose the moisture is there so um, then uh, since they are turned right um, covered by the soil right when this small boat plow work you know since this um, you know soil start turned uh, and cover the weeds right cover the weeds because of the you know lack of uh, the light availability they will die and decompose right they will die and decompose so then they will act Uh, organic matter to the soil as well right because they are decaying plant parts right so even though they are weeds right they are decaying plant parts right they will add organic matter to the soil and then right uh, another important uh, thing is that right um, in soil right uh, in soil right uh, maybe i can 
Uh, can you see this uh, drawing? Can yes. you see this? Uh, yeah. So imagine this is a soil surface, right? The surface of the rice field, right? Um, you know, because of the continuous plowing, right? Continuous plowing, right? Every season we cultivate, right? Um, there, there may be a hard pan, right? A hard pan is in agriculture, um, you know, in soil science is that, uh, you know, it's a compacted soil layer, right? It's a compact soil layer. You know, nowadays, um, you know, these uh, farmers are using, you know, if you go to see the rice fields, mostly they are using these uh, rotary tillers, right? Rotary tillers, because of the continuous use of these uh, rotary tillers, right? What will happen is, you know, they will plow in a shallow depth, right? They will work on a shallow depth, right? Because of that, right, this clay particles settle here, right, uh, in a shallow depth, right? And they will create a hard time, right, at shallow depth, right? So if you have a, a, a hard time, right, that's a compacted soil layer, right, uh, in a shallow depth, right, that will affect the growth of the plants, right, because they have to penetrate through, all right, um, their roots. Uh, if they want to grow, right? If you have a hard pan at the shallow depth, you know, the growth will be retarded, right? Growth will be retarded, okay? So what will happen is, uh, right, um, when you do plowing, right, um, you know, since um, this small boat plow, right, works um, at great depths, right, uh, you can break that hard pan, right? So you have to break the hard pan at shallow depths, at shallow depths, right? At shallow depths, you have to break that hard pan, okay? Um, in a way that you can promote root growth uh, of rice, uh, of rice. And then at uh, this point, uh, I think it should go to the third uh, operation. So I will cut it here, right? Uh, and then second operation is that uh, partly, right? Once you complete plowing, right? Uh, um, in the wet uh, method of rice crop establishment, we have to do uh, partly, right? Partly, right? So it, it, you can uh, ask, right? What what this particular term means, right? Right. So this is uh, nothing but this kind of a uh, you know secondary tillage. So this plowing is the primary one, right? It's a primary tillage, right? This kind of secondary one, uh, but we have to do under flooded conditions. Right, you have to have standing water when you do it. You have to have standing water, tillage under flooded conditions. So, so by doing this, what we uh, do is we churn, right? It's called a churning, right? Churning the clay particles um, that will help, right, uh, to close many of the soil pores, right? Uh, because now the objective is that, right? Uh, you know, the plowing had some objectives, right? Now, um, you know, one, uh, once you complete plowing, right, um, so the next objective is that you have to uh, store the water in the field, right? You have to store the water in the field. So to do that, right, to do that, uh, you have to have hard pan again um, at a kind of a, you know, um, required depth. Uh, not uh, shallow like earlier, right, but at the required depth, you have to have a hard pan. Right, because that, uh, you know, uh, if you have hard time, right, um, the water will not be uh, allowed to percolate, right? The percolation losses you can reduce, right? So the percolation is, as I said, the vertical movement of water, you know, um, away from the roots, right? So this loss you have to uh, minimize or you have to uh, control. So you have to create hard pan um, here at uh, some depth, right? At uh, some depth, you have to create the hard pan, right? So the hard pan is created using this particular process, right? Uh, it's called partly, right? Um, so what you, you will do is that when you, you know, uh, do the secondary tillage when under the flooded conditions, right? So that will churn the clay particles, right? Um, and then these clay particles will settle, right? Settle here, right? At this depth, right? Um, so they will settle here, right? And then um, since they are fine, right? Fine particles, right? Um, 
the soil pores right soil pores are the one right that uh, um, convey the water in the air right convey the water in the air right so that will close many of the soil pores right soil pores will be closed so because of that uh, right the percolation will be reduced right so that's why uh, the objective of puddling the one of the primary objective is that uh, we create the hard pan at required depth so that you can minimize the percolation right so you can minimize the percolation uh, loss just another objective also right uh, we said that we can bury the weeds right so when you right uh, when you do puddling right they will be uh, you can accelerate the yeah, uh, decomposition and then you can uh, control effectively right uh, uh, they are uh, you know the population is coming up right you can control that right so that's another object right but the primary one is that you know you have to maintain the standing water right standing water to facilitate that right uh, we have to do partly okay so that's the second operation right and then now you plow your land you already done plowing right so you have uh, done you have completed the puddling as well right and then we move right uh, so uh, you have seen the rice fields right so they will have bunch right? they will have bunch right so this bunch right um, um before you go to the uh, the last uh, operation that's the level right you have to clear this uh, bunch right so you have to clean the bunch right that means you have to scrap the weeds right uh, remove the weeds right and then uh, another operation is that it's called uh, bunch plastering right so here it's about it is there right um sometime they can call it as bunch plastering right you know from uh, because of the previous season cultivation right um, you know these bunds may be damaged right um, damaged or maybe there may be holes and all right um, so um, you have to plast right um, so how you plast is that uh, you take uh, the you know uh, when you pad uh, when you do paddling right uh, you know you will get uh, mud right mud kind of stuff right so you use that mud right uh, to plast uh, the bunds right to plaster the bunds um, and uh, just kind of a renovation right uh, you do before uh, you start the cultivation right the objective is that we have to minimize the lateral seepage of water right lateral seepage of water right we said that right uh, the vertical movement is percolation right the vertical movement of water is called as percolation the lateral movement is called as seepage right seepage right so if you don't plaster the bunds right um, so there will be water losses uh, because of this seepage right seepage right water will move uh, through the bunds right uh, laterally right um, like uh, for example see the, this is the bund right this is your paddy field right so this is the field right this is field so this uh, both side you have bunds right if your bund is leaking right uh, then water will go away right uh, laterally it will move right so that movement is called as seepage right so you have to control that as well right you have to control that as well so that's the reason why we have to do uh, bund plastering right bund plastering and also when you renovate these bunds right um, so you have to make uh, them at proper height right proper height to stop uh, runoff right you know when um, you know there are a lot of water comes in because of rain or maybe irrigation right if you don't maintain the height right if it is low then it will um, go uh, above the bund right if you don't maintain at the proper height you know the water will flow above the bund right so you that's why you have to your bunds should be in proper height to stop runoff runoff losses and also these bunds uh, will uh, serve as walking access to your field right usually in rice field we walk right or maybe you can use a bicycle or something right so they they will uh, serve as access points uh, to your field right so in that way you have to make them right and then um, you know during this uh, bund plastering right uh, i said you know you have to 
close the holes and all damages you have to come uh, you know renovate you know in that process you have to close uh, you know there will be ant nests right uh, and nest uh, there there can be field rat or termite breeding ground right you know field rat is um, you know um, this uh, is a uh, you know huge problem in some areas right um, so they will usually have their breeding grounds um, especially in the buns right especially in the buns because in the buns um, it's uh, not flooded it's not under flood right so this uh, field rat or termites uh, right uh, their breeding grounds uh, can be in these buns right and also sometimes in some places like especially in the wet zone there can be crabs right uh, they they will make those holes in the buns right crab holes right uh, you know these fresh water crabs right um, so or they will make a hole right so you have to close it or you have to plaster uh, using the that mud right and then when you make a bunch right uh, for your field right um, so it's uh, this kind of a recommendation of the department of agriculture and other people are irrigation department uh, they are working on that you know they say uh, they advise the farmers right uh, to uh, make uh, you know um, into large plots right rather than having a small small uh, plots uh, you know separated by the bunch right because that will reduce the cost of management right yeah, especially yeah, irrigation fertilizer application or maybe chemical ap application even the harvest right you know when you have uh, you know small plots um, separated by you know every we are bunch right you will waste the space right uh, one uh, that's one thing right and then you know it's very difficult to move those uh, harvests right uh, you know across the bunch uh, they will damage the bunch right um and the operations will be you know affected right um, those things right those things uh, you know when you have large tracts right um, it's advisable but practically sometimes it's not possible because you know in sri lanka right uh, we use bunds to demarcate you know uh, our you know ownership uh, for those uh, you know uh, rice fields right you know our farmers have uh, very small size plots right for rice fields um, you know the ownership is uh, so the fields are belongs to several people right then obviously they use the bunds as uh, demarcation right um, um, of ownership in that case it's uh, you, you cannot say you have to use a large plots large tracts um, that obviously efficiency is high but uh, you know sometimes practically impossible right uh, because of the ownership issue right uh, ownership issue we have uh, because we have we have a small scale farm right so that's uh, all about this uh, bunt uh, clearing right then once you clear the bunts right now you establish the bunts right um, so you have to level the land right level right uh, because um, now um, this uh, field is uh, after partly right um, so you have to level why because you know it's uh, you know you have to facilitate the irrigation right um, if you level the field only right uh, you can uh, provide you know homogeneous irrigation right kind of a, um, proper irrigation you can give right uh, when you level the land right when you level that right, you have to maintain a small slope you know, because uh, always you have to remember you have to remove the excess water from the field right so that's uh, through the drainage outlet right so uh, if you if you have an opportunity to um, see a land preparation operation right um, in a rice field you will see right so they will make uh, kind of small um, channels right field channels right that will bring the water and also right the excess water should be removed through drainage out so right? in such way you have to do level right so so it's um, advisable to maintain a small slope so that will help to uh, drain the excess water uh, from the field okay and then um, right obviously when you uh, do leveling right uh, you have to prepare the field irrigation channels and the drainage fields right uh, to remove excess water right and the drainage um, irrigation channels to bring the water in 
right? Um, the drainage base uh, to bring the excess water out, right? Uh, remove the excess water. Okay, so that's uh, eleven, right? Um, so those are the major operations uh, involved in land preparation, right? Okay, so that's uh, the uh, wetland preparation method, right? Wetland preparation method. That's the common kind of uh, common method. Uh, most of the farmers used, right, um, uh, to do uh, in Sri Lanka, right? Are there any questions? from the wetland preparation before we move to the dry land preparation. Any questions, any issues? So is that clear? If I ask the reasons for each and every operation, can you can you tell in the exam? Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, sir. So it's clear, no? Right. Uh, so that's uh, with now. Preparation, right? This dry land preparation is practiced in some areas only, right? Some areas only. But it's kind of a water conservation method, right? Uh, in an area, you know, where the water irrigation facilities are less, right? Uh, or maybe soil is sandy, right? Um, in such cases, right, uh, uh, they, they practice dry land uh, preparation, right? Uh, so it's called as, right, uh, as I said previously, it's called as Manavari in Tamil, and then in single, it's called as Kekulam method, right? Kekulam method. Um, so it, because um, uh, it depends on the rain, uh, rainfall, right? Uh, the water source is rain, right? So therefore, it comes with the onset of intermonsoon rains, right? Uh, so intermonsoon is that, you know, uh, we have two major monsoons in Sri Lanka, right? Uh, as you know, one is the northeast monsoon that gives you the Maha season, but southwest uh, monsoon that uh, gives you yellow season, right? In between the, those two um, major monsoons, we have another two monsoons that's, uh, that's minor ones, right? So it's called as intermonsoon, right? Intermonsoon. So, um, so they start, right, this dry land preparation operation uh, with that intermonsoon, right? Before Jala also we have one intermonsoon, right? Before Maha also we have another intermonsoon, right? So uh, with that rain, right, uh, they uh, start uh, this land preparation. Okay. Okay, can you see the slide? Okay. So usually, right, um, this is practiced in um, the areas like Ampara district, right? Um, so usually the soil also like you not know, that much, it doesn't have clay, right? Um, kind of sandy type soils, right? So they use these tra tractor mounted time tillers, right? Um, for land preparation, right? And also they use uh, ungerminated seeds, right? Um, um, in, in wetland preparation, mostly um, we use the free germinated seeds, right? Free germinated seeds. But in dry land preparation, right, uh, we use the ungerminated seeds, right? The reason is if you use um, the pre germinated seeds, success rate will be uh, low, uh, you know, because the pre germinated ones will have like, uh, you know, the small shoots and roots, right? and they will be damaged because of these dry conditions, right? So that's why, you know, uh, um, um, we, we uh, use uh, ungerminated seeds, um, you know, in... Um, so this, this kind of, uh, you know, sowing or broadcasting in kind of sand, right? Uh, sand environment. And then, um, Tamil is also the same type of Ampara, so, so it's kind of a um, you know broadcasting the seeds, ungerminated seeds, right? Uh, 
Oh, you know, sometimes you can do so raw CD, but uh, not many times, right? Not, uh, it's not popular, mostly the broadcasting. Um, so this is the kind of a method uh, that will um, conserve water and also the labor, right? Uh, because the, because of less operations, right? Uh, you have seen, you know, in the wetland preparation, they are, uh, we have to do a lot of operations, right? Uh, puddling, leveling, burn, burn clearing, burn plastering, those things, right? Everything requires a lot of labor, right? Um, so they are, those are labor-intensive operations, right? But uh, trial and preparation comparatively uh, use less labor and less water. But the problem is, you know, uh, since we don't have standing water, right, um, it's very difficult to control the weeds, right? Uh, weed controlling will be very uh, difficult. Um, and also the yield losses uh, because of that, right? So they estimated the yield losses can be um, ranging from 40 to 100 percent. Sometimes you, you may uh, encounter uh, the total failure as well, right? You know, if um, the rain um, rain fails, right? Uh, or wheat uh, may be, you know, uh, much problematic. In that case, uh, there can be a total failure as well. That's why uh, we have that 100 percent loss also can occur with this dry land method. Right, and but uh, you know um, this um, you know this Manavari or Kakulam method. Right uh, now, the Department of Agriculture proposed um, some integration, right, uh, with uh, some improved methods, right, for weed control and other aspects, right, water conservation and all. It's called as Nava Kakulam, right? So they 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 publish some articles uh, how to do this, how we can improve. And this uh, particular uh, Manavario peculum method, uh, dry land preparation method, right? Um, through integrating some of the uh, practices, right? But that that uh, at this level you don't need that, right? Okay. So this is the uh, you know the major difference between the wetland preparation and dry land preparation, right? Um, so it, it it's true that it will you know it will uh, require less water and less labor, but uh, you know the uh, as you think, as you imagine the productivity um, and yield will be low, right? Uh, under the dry land, uh, under the rice established and using this particular dry land method. Okay. Okay, so uh, those are about the land uh, preparation, right? And then if we move to the seed treatment, right? Uh, seed treatment, we said that we have to uh, remove the Roman seed for rice, right? Many of the rice varieties have a dormant period, right? Yeah. So there are several methods you can apply to break the dormancy, right? So one of such method is that uh, you can expose the seeds to high temperatures, like uh, 40 to 42 degrees Celsius for one to two days prior to sowing. That's one method. And then another method is there, it's called seed priming, right? Uh, you have to soak the seeds for four to eight hours. And again, uh, retry, right? Prior to sowing, right? So then, uh, seed, uh, this seed must be sown within one to three, uh, one to two days after the priming, right? So the, those are the methods we can use uh, to remove the dormancy, right? Uh, and then, um, especially uh, in the wetland, uh, you know, after the wetland preparation, if you um, want to use the wet pet method, right, of the crop establishment, so you need the pre-germinated seeds, right? So in preparing the pre-germinated seeds, there are several uh, steps involved, right? So first you have to clean, uh, of, uh, you have to clean, uh, you have to do cleaning for unfilled seeds and husks, right? Um, so how we do that cleaning is that, right? Uh, you have a bag of rice, right? Rice seeds, um, that's the paddy seeds, right? So what you have to do is um, take a, you know, maybe a large bucket or something, maybe a container, right? Uh, so you prepare water sodium chloride solution, right? Sodium chloride solution, maybe a barrel is soaked, right? Sodium chloride is the normal salt, right? Um, in the kitchen we use, right? So you mix uh, both, right? Um, so you have to make uh, um, the, the density of this uh, particular mixture, right? Um, so you can use an egg. Right, uh, you, uh, you can use an egg, right? Yeah, you can use an egg. Um, so you have to put this egg, right? 
uh, into that solution, right? And then make it float at 50%, right? So because this is kind of, um, you know, um, at home, right? and especially adjust the density of that particular solution, right? And then, uh, right, um, you can put the paddy seeds, right, into that particular uh, solution. So then, um, the, you know, these unfilled seeds and husk and everything will float, right? Um, whatever, uh, you know, um, whatever the things uh, um, that is not good for germination, right, that will flow, right? So you can remove those materials, you know, the floating materials you can remove. In such way, you can clean the um, uh, paddy seeds, right? And then, you know, those quality seeds, right, um, you have to take, um, you know, for soaking, right, take a good quality water and submerge seeds for around like 24 hours, right? It's around one one day, or maybe until uh, smaller shoots appear, right? Um, you know, you can visualize, right, whether they produce those, um, you know, sign of ear right? But if it is a whole day weather, right, um, you know, if it is uh, normal, right, um, temperature like maybe about 30, then that's fine, right? One day, 24 hours, around 24 hours is fine. But if it's a cold weather, right, then it uh, need to be soaked for um, maybe a little bit, little bit more, right? 36 to 48 hours, okay? So once you soak, right, then you have to drain and dry the seed, right, um, in a bag for maybe another 24 hours, right? In a shade area, right? Um, not in the direct sunlight, okay, in a shady area, uh, where the air circulation can be good, right, uh, so that's a kind of incubation period, right, so that will promote this, you know, um, the germinage uh, of seeds, right, but you have to make sure that, um, you know, um, when you do these operations, that temperature should not exceed more than 40, right, um, during these operations, because otherwise, this, uh, you know, these growing seeds uh, will be, uh, damage okay so that's uh, how we uh, prepare the pre-germinated uh, seeds and then right uh, let me okay so this broke uh, then we have to broadcast the seeds before roots grow more than five mm limiting length right that's kind of a you know a time only you can keep right once you get the pre-germinated seeds, right, it's better, right, you go for broadcasting or maybe, um, right, uh, grow seeding or whatever it is, right, uh, or maybe the, uh, you want to sell your whatever it is, right. So the, that's kind of a length, they say, right, if um, the roots uh, grow more than 5 millimeter, right, then there's a high chance that they will get damaged uh, when you start planting, right, then uh, it's not uh, recommended, right. And then since we do the soaking and all, right, and when we calculate the planting rate, right, uh, so we have to allow uh, an excess uh, 10 to 30 percent seed, right, because that um, to account the weight in weight of the water, right, because uh, since we, you know, soaked in the water, right. And then the, another important thing, like uh, if you are using a drill seeder, right, um, you know, sometime you can establish uh, rice without uh, or maybe with minimum tillage, right? There are some systems there, right? In that case, they use uh, um, this uh, drill seeders, right? Just uh, they will drill and uh, plant there, right? So pre-germinated seeds, um, you know, uh, are not good for the drill seeders. Uh, the reason is, you know, when you put um, it in these drill seeders, there's high chance that uh, they will um, damage these, uh, you know, small shoots and all, right? small shoots and roots, yeah, it will be easily get damaged, right? So so that's the reason it's not suitable for drill seeders, right? Um, so that's all about pre-germinated uh, seeds. And then, right, um, you know, the, that's, uh, so we have learned, right, how we break the dormancy and then how we get the pre-germinated seeds, right? Um, and then there are, there are some places, right, we can uh, apply uh, some seed treatment, uh, such as fungicide, right? But this is very rarely used uh, in Asia, right? Because of the, um, their low effectiveness in controlling those fungal diseases, right? Um, at the seedling stage, uh, we 
may not get much fungal diseases, but when plant grows, fungal diseases come, right? Um, but right because of their low effectiveness, um, they are not much used. But uh, you know, there are two methods can be applied, right? Um, the first method is uh, proposed by the International Rice Research Institute, and the second method is usually followed uh, in South India, right? So, so in the first method, right, they um, recommend, right, to dissolve uh, three gram of any fungicide, right? Um, here some examples are there, right? You don't need to remember them, right? Um, so three grams fungicide per kilogram seed, right? For example, if you are taking um, 10 kilograms, right? Uh, then you will need 30 grams, right? In five millimeter, five milliliter water, right? Uh, inside a plastic bag or plastic bottle, right? And then you have to distribute the fungicide slurry, right? Uh, about the walls of the container. Uh, and then you have to put the seeds inside that container, seal them, right? And shake uh, to coat uh, the seed uniformly with this fungicide uh, slurry, right? It's kind of an application, right, of that fungicide. Uh, to the seeds. And then, uh, right, um, there's a wet uh, seed treatment uh, is applied in South India, right? Usually they also use fungicide, right? Uh, like carbon decim or um, this particular one, pyroculone, right? Uh, as a solution, right? Um, so they recommend two gram per liter of water for one kilogram of rice seeds. So, so this is a recommendation they use. And then uh, they ask us to like uh, soak the seeds in water uh, for 10 hours, right? And drain the excess water, right? Um, and then uh, you can uh, um, sow the seeds, right? So this uh, this uh, wet method, right? Wet seed treatment, right? Uh, they say that right, this can give some protection, right? Uh, for the seedlings up to 40 days, right? From the blast and all, right? Uh, from those fungal diseases, right? So that kind of uh, two methods available uh, for seed treatment. And then in some places, right, um, as seed treatment, the inoculation also uh, uh, practiced, right? So in inoculation, right, uh, what they do is um, they inoculate this particular bacteria. That's the Asospirillum, right? Uh, Asospirillum species, right? They do not promote uh, nitrogen. Fixes, right? Uh, you may have studied, right? Uh, you know, the, the rhizobium species in legumes, um, they will have the symbiotic relationship uh, with the, um, the nodules of the legumes, right? And then they will fix uh, nitrogen, right? But here, right, uh, they, uh, they don't have a symbiotic relationship, but, um, you know, these... Uh, um, this particular right uh, bacteria, they will right survive in the rice fields, right? So if you can inoculate them with the seeds, right? They will help to uh, uh, fix uh, atmospheric nitrogen, right? So then the recommendation is here, right? Uh, you can use one kilo, one gram, right, of this particular inoculant, right? As uh, so right? Like um, it's available like a powder, right? In this picture, you see, right, it's available like powder, right? So per kilogram, one gram, right? And then you mix with the primed wet seed, right, um, just before sowing, right? Just before sowing, right, uh, you can uh, mix with the wet seed and then you can sow, right? Then um, in your rice field, right, uh, you can uh, introduce this particular bacteria that will help um, to promote nitrogen fixation, right? Um, so that those are the seed treatments, right? Um, so we have to do the treatment, right? To break the dormancy, uh, you can do the treatment to apply fungicide, right? You can do the treatment uh, to introduce asospirin, right? Uh, as the inoculant, right? Those are the things under the seed treatment you should know, right? Okay, now your seed, that is the planting material is ready, right? Uh, your field is ready, now the planting material is ready, right? Now we have, we have on, we want to establish the plant, right? Um, okay, so, uh, any questions so far? 
Anything you want to ask before we move to the crop establishment? Okay, if you don't have questions, right? So when we say crop establishment, right, how you establish the crop, right? We said that there are two methods. Uh, one is the direct seeding, right? And then uh, transplant, right? Rice, you can establish uh, using two methods, right? So in, in Sri Lanka, right, uh, around 95% um, is direct seed, right? Again, under the direct seeding, you can uh, uh, you can do broadcasting, um, you can do row plant, right, uh, row seed. Right? So again, um, you know, if you take that, that is uh, mostly broadcast, right? Um, that's randomly sowing, right? Bro mostly broadcasting, right? Our farmers are mostly broadcasting, mostly broadcasting, and then um, mostly direct seed, right? Direct seed, 95 percent. And also, uh, it can be either dry seeding method or wet seeding method, as I, as I, as I said, right? And but with the transplanting requires rice nurseries you have covered in the practical side. So it is recommended that all the farmers under the same track, right? Um, you know, when you establish crop, right? I am talking about the irrigated rice, right? Rice and irrigation, right? Uh, for example, you can imagine rice cultivation under large reservoirs, right? Um, in area, right? Or maybe um, Kalao, right? Uh, those uh, uh, major irrigation schemes. So when the farmers are under those uh, schemes, right? Um, so it's uh, the Department of Agriculture and Department of Irrigation advise them to use, right, the same uh, age plus, right, uh, same age plus, and then start the operation at the same time. Um, do you know why? Uh, anyone can guess? What's the reason? Don't you know? So the reason is that, you know, the irrigation is required, right? When you open the canals, right, uh, you can you cannot open uh, for individual farms, right? So you have to open the rest of the right to lose gate and right uh, the, the irrigation system, right, for entire fields, right? So if they start at the same time, right, uh, you can use um, the water vision, right? Uh, and then um, you know, they have to, uh, they are advised to choose same age class, right? Then their operations are aligned, right? Uh, on the same time. But they can, uh, obviously, they can select different varieties. They can select different varieties because it's um, advised, uh, advisable to select different varieties because sometimes, uh, you know, in an area, right, uh, any pest or disease breakout occurs, right? Um, if uh, same variety is there, right, um, the damage will be very severe, right? If um, we have different varieties, then uh, some varieties may be resistant, right, or tolerance to some western diseases, then some will survive, right? So it's advisable to use different varieties, but, uh, but the same class, same age class, maybe three months, three and a half months, right? Like that, right? Because in a, in a way that, you know, when, when we open the irrigation canals, right, then uh, they can efficiently use the water. Otherwise, you know, each and every farmer, you cannot open the irrigation, right? Um, so that's very problem. So that's why it's staggering, right? Of age classes uh, need to be discouraged, right? Um, so you have, um, you know, this staggering means, you know, different farmers uh, choosing different age class, right? That should be discouraged, um, especially in, uh, when you have rice cultivation, um, under the uh, irrigation, right? So those are the points um, uh, you should uh, know, right? Right. So the, those are the uh, stuff you should know about, basic stuff uh, you should know about crop establishment, but we will move to, uh, you know, the different methods, that's the direct seeding and then transplanting. You should know some stuff. I think the next class uh, we will study that. Um, but I want to discuss something with your class, right? Uh, since uh, next Thursday is um, um, so holiday, right? So we will not have a class, right? So is that okay, right? Um, can you give me like uh, one hour and 30 minutes on 
would it be okay because i need maybe one hour 30 or 40 minutes uh, to finish this rice uh, because there are operations right we have to management practices we have to cover right uh, some more uh, but 